Welcome back. In our last video, we splitted our code to give a structure to our application. And now the code to start the application is in the start function of app package. We created a new request multiplexer instead of using the default one. And we moved the handlers to their own files. We also introduced the Go modules to let Go understand our package structure. So in this video, we will introduce Gorilla Mux, and by the end of it, you will understand the routing capabilities of it. So let's start with adding the Gorilla Mux dependency in your code. Let's open the Mux GitHub page. Gorilla Mux is a powerful router that simplifies route definitions as well as things like adding middleware. The Mux router works in a similar way as the standard HTTP, but it has great request matching capabilities. So if we see, it can match requests against so many parameters. We'll be doing examples of most of them. Here we see how we can uh, install Mux in our code base. So let's copy the Mux dependency URL in the app.go. We'll add the dependency here. And now instead of calling http.newServeMux, let's duplicate this. Instead of calling this, we'll call mux.newrouter. My ID is not able to find this dependency because we haven't downloaded it. So let's go to the terminal and say go run main.go. Now because we have added that dependency and we are using go modules, it will try to find that module package and it will download and will attach it with my project. So as we see the mux is downloaded now and my server is running back again. So let's go back to the code and we'll see here that my dependency is resolved. And this is the only thing which we need to do to introduce Mux in our code. We don't need to change any other thing. So that's the beauty of Mux. Mux is idiomatic and this makes it very easy to adopt it or even moving away from it. So let's test our code once again and see if Mux is rightly integrated. Our server is running and we can just say send here. So we have our response. So that means Mux has started taking the control now and we are getting this response via Mux. One more change before we move any further. So here if we see we are naming our variable as Mux, but this Mux is now colliding with our imported package name. So although this is working fine for, for the moment, but let's uh, change it so that it won't clash. So now let's name our variable as router. So one question you might have that why should we use Gorilla Mux? The world of uh, Go is full of several HTTP libraries and frameworks. And the reason for that is the ease which these libraries and frameworks provide. So you can do things using standard HTTP package, but it will be cumbersome. Gorilla Mux and Jinjonic are one of the most popular. Mux is more of a library. Basically, it is just a router that simplifies route definitions. Whereas Jinjonic is a framework with additional features like validation, customized response writing. And while using Mux, uh, we rely on JSON and XML encoder for doing the same thing. So there are several factors while choosing a library or framework, and it's not uh, one size fits all. So for this course, we'll be using Gorilla Mux because of its routing capabilities. Let's start with the first example that will be based on the URL segmenting. And let's say we want to retrieve the information of a customer. So for that, the URL will be customers and then we'll add a segment to it and say customer ID and we'll write a new handle function for it, which will be get customer. Now let's see how can we retrieve the value of customer ID from the URL. For that, first we'll create a handle function. So we can take the help of IntelliJ and create function. Let's make it writer and request. Segment names are used to create a map of route variables and it can be retrieved by calling mux.vars and we need to pass the request inside it. So this function will return a map of all the segment names. So we can just say customer ID and let's send this value using fpred function back back in the response. So let's test this. 
and run it again let's go to postman and add some value in the url and we should get it back in the response so here it is and let's say i added i'm so let's say i'm adding a string value c9001 and we'll get it back in the response so that's how you retrieve a value from a url segment so now let's extend this example and uh, let's say all my customer ids are numeric and i want this request to match only if my customer id is numeric and for the rest of the cases it should return 404 so it is also very simple to do we just need to add a regular expression here and we say from 0 to 9 and onwards so if the value is a numeric value then that value will be transferred to customer id and automatically the mux will take care of uh, 404 not found case so let's run it now stop it run it and let's start with uh, a string value so here it says 404 page not found because this value is not matching but if i remove c from here and send this value then this will be matched and in that case we'll receive the response back so this is how the request matcher works so we can also add methods matcher to all these requests so if we are not defining any methods matcher by default it is a http get request but if you want to make it explicit then we can just call the methods function and then say http dot method get so this is a constant which is defined with the http library and uh, we can just copy it and paste it with the rest of our functions so let's take another example and uh, in this example we'll create a new customer and in that case our method will be http post and let's see how we can define this so let's duplicate this one and here we say create customer and we want to say this will be a post method so let's create a handler function for this and we'll say writer and request and here we'll use the fmtf print library with w and say okay post the request received so now we have registered a post request with the slash customer url and let's run this and see so this is the get request which was already registered and now let's use the post request so here we have the response from the server and the post request received this message was coming from the create customer handler this is how you can create different types of request matches and then you can get it registered with the mux uh, multiplexer so as we move ahead we'll be doing more examples of it so for now let's take a look at the go modules so when go downloaded the mux dependency it also made an entry in the go.mod file and here we can see it is there's a require entry with the url and the version number and when the go modules download an external dependency it also maintains a go.sum file we can see that file here so this contains the cryptographic hashes of the content of specific module versions so this file um, it acts like a lock file and it locks the version information of the module downloaded so it ensures that the future download of these modules retrieves the same version as the first download go.mod and go.sum both of these files they should be checked into the repository and uh, when you share your code with your colleague he will also have the same version of the dependency because of the go.sum file and before uh, go modules this was not possible and people end up using different versions of the dependency using the go get command and to solve this problem some people also kept the dependency checked in as a part of their code repository but uh, we don't need to do uh, this anymore that is where the go module helps us so recap we added a gorilla mux dependency to our code base and we played around some of the routing capabilities of mux we learned how to retrieve values from the url segments and also to match requests based on regular expressions so that's about the gorilla mux and in our next video we'll be learning about the hexagonal architecture